Hi there, my name is Camille and I am back to talk about another graphic novel. While I am normally a huge fan of manga primarily, there are other graphic novels that do catch my eye. And speaking of one, this caught my eye in our children's graphic novel shelves while I was working on shelving books and it is The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. I think you can probably tell right off the bat this has beautiful cover art, it's so sweet, and it also was a winner of the prestigious Will Eisner Award that goes to graphic novels. So to talk a little bit about the story, it focuses on this girl right here. Her name is Greta and she is a blacksmith. And she discovers one day these peculiar little creatures that she later finds out are called tea dragons. She meets the owner of this tea dragon and many others named Hesekiel, who seems to be an immortal creature who owns a cafe and has been taking care of these tea dragons for years in a special tradition. Greta seems very interested in tea dragons, and she also meets another girl, Minette, who seemed to just appear one day in front of Hesekiel and also attracted her own tea dragon. This story is very gentle and very sweet. It's about Minette and Greta growing as friends, Greta deciding to learn about a classic art of caretaking for these sweet little dragons, and the story of how Hesekiel and his partner Eric ended up getting into raising tea dragons in the first place. This is a very gentle read. It goes by really quickly, and it's just like a nice little fairy tale. In fact, it even really makes you want to feel like you want to wrap yourself in a warm blanket and get a cup of tea yourself. As I mentioned before, the art is very sweet, very gentle. There's almost like a Disney quality to it. And that goes throughout. Even near the end of the book, there's a nice little, there we go, a two page spread that I would like to show with our main characters just enjoying themselves. And at the end of the story, which um, this is the first volume out of three, we also have the second one, The Tea Dragon Festival, and the third one is currently awaiting publication. Anyhow, at the end of the story, there's actually a little tea dragon handbook section that has details about the lore of the world and the art of raising tea dragons. I really can't recommend this book enough. It's really sweet and comfortable and heartwarming. It's really just the sort of thing that I like to read at night. Um, and I love this book so much that I actually went to Katie O'Neill's website and got myself a wall tapestry. And I'm very excited to read volume two as well. And I recommend this to everyone. There's a little bit of something that you can find as long as you're willing to look and seek out a little bit of whimsy. All right, take care and happy reading.